So a lot of server-side languages like ColdFusion and Lucy CFML have some sort of a date add functionality where you can add a delta to a particular part of the date. So for example, I can add to the years of a date or the hours or the milliseconds. Um, and in this case, you can see I can do something like, I want to say add a year, add this degree of year delta, so plus or minus a particular range, and then the, uh, the date that I'm dealing with. Um, JavaScript actually has the same exact functionality built in. It's just not presented in a really intuitive API. Uh, and in fact, the underlying date object in JavaScript, which in my opinion is a heavily underappreciated part of the JavaScript ecosystem, exposes this exact same behavior. Of course, again, the API is not great. So what I want to do is wrap it up in this date helper so that I can expose this kind of a cleaner, more familiar date delta manipulation that you would see in a server-side language. And then uh, we can see in a second that it's actually using the date object under the hood. So uh, this demo, let's look at the demo first, then we'll look at the implementation. So this demo is my app component, and all I have here is a, a bunch of deltas, and you can see they all start at zero, and the base date is now, so whenever this demo is loaded. And uh, what I'm going to do is on every digest, I'm going to take the base date, and then I'm just going to apply all of these deltas, the year, month, day, hour, minute, second, millisecond, and then ultimately I'm going to format that date and store it in our view model so we can output it on the page. And you can see the date mask up here is just the year, month, day, hour, minute, second, milliseconds. And each one of these is going to be controlled by a range. And if we jump over into the HTML template, you can see I have year, month, day, so on and so forth. And each one of these is really just a range going from negative 100 to positive 100. And every time that value is changed, you can see I'm taking the value of that range and I'm piping it back into the delta. So essentially, we're using ng model here without ng model, more or less. So let's jump over and look at actually what's happening. So let's just refresh. So you can see it's currently November 15th, 7.56 a.m. And here are my ranges. And as I increase, you can see that the year here is increasing. And as I decrease, you can see that the year is decreasing. Now, the year is not a particularly interesting one. Really, it gets much more interesting when we dip down into the lower fields. And here's where we get to see the exciting part of the native JavaScript date behavior, which is its overflow capacity. Meaning, as I start to add months and subtract months, we can see that this month field is changing. But the great part is, watch what happens when I cross over the year boundary. So you can see when we, when we added month, we're at December. And when we add two months, here's where the magic happens. We looped back to January, but we incremented the date. So we went from 1998 to 1999, January. The same thing happens with days. You can see I'm increasing the date. And once we hit the end of January and we roll over to February, we change the February month here. And again, this happens for every single part of that date object. If we decrease the hours, you can see the hours are going down. And once we get beyond zero, notice that the date itself changed. So we went from February 1, 0, 0 to January 31st, 23. And again, they all work like this. You can see as I'm sliding that the dates will change. And you know the degree of which the, the dates change depends on the degree of the overflow in the field we're talking about. But just very cool stuff. Okay, so I'm telling you that this is the native behavior of the JavaScript date object. And all we're doing is wrapping it up in this date helper in order to expose this more palatable API. So what is actually happening under the hood in our date helper? And what you'll see is very little. Um, first, I have a date part here, and that's the value that can be passed in to that first argument. Right, so you can see I have year, month, day, hour, minute, second, millisecond. These are the kind of uh, the longer, more intuitive strings. But then I also have the single value, which is intended to mimic the date mask available in the format. 
date functionality that ships natively Angular. So I'm using the Angular values and then just some human values as well. And when we jump down into the add, can I even fit it on a full screen? Uh, not quite, but you can see it's really just 20 lines of code. And all I'm doing is taking the date input, I'm creating a copy of that date because natively when you set values on a date object, it mutates that date in place. And I'm just gonna make it an immutable behavior by copying that date and then applying the mutations to the copy and returning the copy. And this is as simple as looking at the date part and then just figuring out which getter and setter methods I want to call. So when we add, for example, 18 months, what 18 months really means is go to that date, get the current month, add the 18, and then set that back into the month field. And again, because we get this native overflow behavior of JavaScript dates, if I add and subtract uh, months outside the 12 month capacity of the Gregorian calendar, that overflow na naturally distributes to the rest of the fields, right? So if we come back here and let's just refresh. So we're in 11, so let's just play this out a step at a time. So we're in 11 and I'm gonna add one. So what that's doing under the hood is it's going here and it's saying, get me the current month, which I th think is 10, I can't remember if they're one or zero offsets. Add one, which will be the 12th month, and then set that 12th month back into the date. Okay, fine, so now we're at 12. So now if we add two, and remember we're at 11. If we add two, we're gonna say get the month, which is the 11th month, add two, which is the 13th month, right? And there's no 13th month, but when I go to set the 13th month, what that does is automatically increment the year and then set the month to one, right? Because again, if we go here, um, oh, we did it. We're at the uh, January, right? So we start off, again, let's refresh. We start off at 11 and when we add two, it sets it to one, but it increments the year. And that's just the native JavaScript behavior. So our demo here is really doing almost nothing, right? The demo is essentially taking all of this setter and getter functionality and wrapping it in a switch statement so that we can more easily call a particular year so that we don't have to call the set and get functions ourselves. I mean, really the entire demo is this, uh, what is it, like seven lines of code. So anyway, the date object, again, just a underappreciated part of the core JavaScript runtime. And uh, hopefully by wrapping it up in this date helper, we can expose a slightly more user-friendly API that gives us the same power that JavaScript gives us, just makes it a little bit more accessible. And um, as a side part, this is also the chance that I had to upgrade to Angular 11. And I'm just, I'm just blown away at Angular. If we refresh this, uh, this, is, this whole thing is 53K, which, you know, if you remember back to the days of Angular 2, this app would have been probably like 600K, maybe more than a megabyte, right? Angular 2, I think would have been like 1.4 megabytes or something, but uh, Ivy's really just blown everything out of the water. So kudos to uh, Angular, and I've noticed that the Angular 11 compiler was way, way faster, even than the Angular 10 compiler, which was quite a bit faster than the previous incarnation. So Angular, man, just, just kicking ass and, uh, and, and moving into the future, loving it, just loving it.